Welcome to module 42 of point set topology part 1. So today we will take up study of properties of topological properties. So recall that we have defined a topological property by which something is true for one space then it must be true for all spaces which are homeomorphic right such a property is called topological property or topological invariant then we made a definition this also we i am recalling that a property is called smallness property if whenever a topology on a given set X has it, then all topologies tau prime smaller than that should also have the property. Similarly, a largeness property is one. Whenever tau has it and tau prime is a larger topology, then tau prime should also have it. Most of the topologies that we have uh, that properties that we have studied in this chapter they belong to the first category namely those which are smallness properties except perhaps the first and second countability they are not exactly of this nature i have already told you the next chapter will consider those which are likely to be called as largeness properties some of them just like Hausdorff, some of like first and second countability there will be some which are not exactly largeness properties in our definition at present <clears throat> what are the things they have studied like path connectivity connectivity and all these things right so what we would like to do is look at a topological property for a space will it be automatically true for a subspace will it be true for a quotient space if it is true for several of them then will it be true for the product space so these are the questions which keep bothering us so we would like to do that in a systematic way as much as possible to begin with in one single place later on we can't do all like that as soon as a new topology comes we can keep asking this question for that topology according to the time availability or our mood okay and then there are many other kinds of questions also you can ask whether it will be persistent on a taking closed subspaces or open subspaces instead of arbitrary subspaces so there are modifications of such questions also so this is what i mean by studying the properties of the topological properties so let us uh, tentatively make a few definitions if we need more and more definitions or modify these definitions we can keep doing that first property is that hereditariness so p is called uh, a property p is called hereditary if whenever x possesses it all subspaces should possess the same property it will be co-hereditary whenever x possesses it all quotients of x should possess it similarly a product invariant there are three different versions here one is finite product invariant another is countable product invariant the third one is product invariant without any 
quantifier, qualifier. Okay, so that is the most general. What is the meaning of product variant? Whenever a family, depending upon finite or countable family of x size are given, such that if each xi has a property, then the product should have, and conversely, if the product has it, each factor should also have it. Okay, sometimes people don't bother about this one. Whenever xi is product has it, it's called product. Uh, product invariant. So the other one they may call it as factor invariant. Once again, there are variants of these concepts. That's what I want to tell you. So depending upon the author and the concepts and you know what exactly you want to study and so on. Okay. There are variants like I already told you, hereditariness, instead of general things, you can just take open subspaces. You may call it open hereditary, or it may be true for only closed subspaces. Then you may call it a closed hereditary, and so on. So they are weaker than actual being hereditary. So you may call together, they may call it as weakly hereditary. But then just weakly hereditary, there will be still ambiguity in this definition. Similarly, for co-hereditary, under any quotient map, if the property persists, then you may call it a co-hereditary. But suppose it, it is only true for open quotients, then you may call it uh, weakly hereditary. Or some other people may call only closed quotients, then they may call it weakly hereditary and so on. Okay. So there are various versions of this one. So here is a table, okay, which will give you fairly good idea of whatever you are going to do uh, right now, and a little more in the in this chapter two, maybe in the next section and so on. So here I have uh, listed seven of the properties that we have studied so far. Compactness, Lindelofness, first and second countable, separable, connected, path connected. Then these are the three properties of the property that we would like to study: hereditariness, co-hereditariness, and productivity. Within productivity, there are three types I told you: finite productivity countable productivity and arbitrary productivity. So this being a little more complicated, we will do it next time. So today let us see whether we will cover this much. Okay. So what I will do, first I will take hereditariness for all these things one after another. Then we will go to co-hereditariness one after another. Okay. So let us look at uh, compact spaces. You already know that closed interval is compact, but the open interval is a subspace, it is not compact. So compactness is not hereditary. On the other hand, you have also proved that every closed subspace of a compact space is compact. We have already proved such a thing, right? So that means it is weakly hereditary. Exactly same thing goes for Lindelofness also. Every closed subspace of a Lindelof space is Lindelof, right? Have you seen that Lindelofness is not hereditary at all? Do you remember when we have done that? Can you see it easily with some example? What is to be done? Take any Lindelof space so that there is a subspace which is not Lindelof. What is Lindelofness? Every open cover should have a countable subcover.
okay a space which is not count uh, lindelof we have seen that you can take for example an uncountable set and a discrete topology on that that is the easiest example of non lindelof space okay now instead of taking subspaces you make this one in a larger space by putting one extra point namely a sierpinski's point okay as soon as you put a sierpinski's point what is the meaning of that that extra point the only open set containing that point is the whole space therefore when you take a covering every covering of this space must have the whole space as one of the members therefore that singleton subspace so that set that will be a cover you take the text member x that's a cover so it's automatically lindelof so this is this way it looks like as if we are cheating but that's a you know <coughs> legal uh, example of a lindelof space such a subspace is not lindelof you can cook up more uh, pleasant examples or or more unpleasant examples also if you like okay so let us keep going first countable and second countable okay this is easy to check that both first and second countability are both hereditary <clears throat> let me do it for second countable first countable you can do uh, exactly same way take a countable base for a topology <clears throat> okay now take a subspace what are the open subspace to the subspace take any open subspace in the original thing intersect with the subspace suppose y is a subspace of x now b is a countable base for y take any member of b intersect it with y and collect them that will become a countable base for y that's all okay so so up till here we have come that countability and second countability are hereditary separability connectivity path connectivity they are not hereditary connectivity and path connectivity you know already okay you take an interval remove a point it's gone the connectivity is gone right <clears throat> so subspaces are hardly uh, need to be connected for a connected space and path connected space but for a separability how do you do that why separability is not <coughs> hereditary remember separability is not there is a countable dense subspace. countable dense set when you go to subspace this is dense set may go away that may not be in the subspace right but that doesn't mean that there is no other countable subset so how do you how do you how do you come how do you give an example of a space such that subspace is not separate so perhaps you may try to do similar to this lindelofness start with a non separable thing and then cook up something bigger which is separable no that may work no so there are ideas you have to you have to sometimes think about these things right so i have given you an example here remember we had this semi open interval topology in which the basic open such that where a comma b a closed b open 
So this was left semi interval, so RL on the on the space of on the set of real numbers. Okay. Consider semi open interval, let's see. Okay. This is separable. You can check that. Namely, again, the set of rational numbers will give you uh, a dense set. Okay, though this is this has a uh, this topology is larger than the uh, usual topology. So this is a dense subset. So this is separable. Once you have a dense set in X, say A is a dense set, A cross A will be dense inside X cross X. So X cross X is separable. Okay. But now I look for a nice subspace here, namely the anti-diagonal, the line given by x plus y equal to 0. Okay. In the usual topology, this is homeomorphic to R. But in the in this in this uh, separable in, in this uh, semi-interval topology in the product. What happens? This becomes a discrete space. Every point is open now. Why? Because given any point x comma minus x, you can take x plus x to x plus epsilon and minus x to minus x plus epsilon. Take the product. So this is half half closed uh, rectangle sitting on the point x, one of the corners will be on x comma minus x. Okay, so this rectangle, half closed rectangle will open. Its intersection with the, the line should be open, but intersection with the line is just single point. So all the single points are open, that means it is discrete. A discrete set with a uh, uncountable set. A discrete topology and uncountable set, right? So that cannot be separable. Okay. This example is quite uh, peculiar. I will I will use it again. Okay, in the next chapter. So as I have pointed out, connectivity and path connectivity, they are not hereditary, that's seen easily. Okay. Now let us go to co-hereditariness. Compactness and Lindelofness, we have seen that the quotients are also compact and Lindelof. Okay. If you don't remember it, you can just argue. The take an open covering for the quotient. Inverse image will be an open covering for the or the original space. It will take a finite covering and come back. Okay. So, that's it. So, 3 and 4 are what? First countability and second countability, right? So, these are weakly co-hereditary in the sense that if it is an open quotient, it's open quotient, then x is second countable implies y is second countable. Once again, it's very easy. What you have to do, start with a countable base for b, take f of b or b range over this curly b. Because f is open, f b is open here. First of all, that is the cross of this one. Now we can verify that this is a base for the topology on y. So same thing works for local base at a point also. All right. So open quotients are preserving the first countability and second countability. So this is weakly co-hereditary. All right. In general, what happens? Once again, we have to cook up examples here. Okay. 
examples if you do it for second countable for the whole space or even for a point the proofs will be more or less same okay so i will put it for now this time first countability okay a space which is first countable but the quotient is not first countable quotient means what now general quotient not open quotient open quotient will be first countable okay all that i do is take infinitely many copies of r disjoint copies is it first countable any first countable space if you take uh, any number of them and take disjoint union it will be still first countable the disjoint union doesn't disturb local properties all right so it is first countable now what i do i co construct a quotient of this by identifying all the zeros in each copy to a single point so you can name them as r cross 0 r cross 1 r cross 2 r cross 3 and so on if you want okay these are the copies of r right now 0 cross n all of them will be identified to one single point we denote it as 0 no other identification this all okay so equivalence class is what whenever it is zero cross something it is equivalent to zero cross that all other points are singleton classes so that is the quotient set give the quotient topology what is the quotient topology something is open in the quotient space if and only if its inter, inter its uh, inverse image is open in the disjoint union of all these copies of r okay so that is my example here x equal to disjoint union of xn countably many copies of r and y to be the quotient space obtained by identifying all the zeros to a single point then x is second countable but y is not first countable even at that point zero which is the class of all the zeros okay the first countability fails okay so if it's not first countability it cannot be second countable so it, this gives you example for both of them okay how to see that it is not first countable so that is also easy suppose we have a countable base bn of our neighborhoods of zero okay local base for this quotient space y okay let us tentatively denote this quotient space quotient map from x to y by q all right given any bn like b1 you pick up then i can choose an interval in the x1 x1 copy of r around 0 so that it is so small that this b1 intersection q of x1 the image of that line okay that is not contained inside this q of i1 do the same thing for all n b1 b2 bn and so on you look at the corresponding bn and then go to the corresponding copy of of uh, r there you choose a neighborhood very small so that that neighborhood doesn't contain this that's all okay so once you have got for each each and this interval i n you take u to be this disjoint union of all the i ns in the disjoint union okay when you take q of those things 
that will be an open subset because the inverse image will be precisely disjoint union of these ions. Okay. So u equal to union of all these q ions, all right, that is an open subset containing the point, the zero, this zero bracket, you know, the class of zeros. But because of the choice, this choice, none of the BNs will be contained inside you. Okay. If it's a base, then some BN must be contained inside you. For every open subset, there must be a point in the, there must be a member in the base which goes inside that. Though this is not a base. In fact, what we have proved here is no neighborhood system, okay, can be countable or take a countable set of neighborhoods, it cannot be a base. That's what we have proved. I started with countable, I never used that as a base, countable set of neighborhoods of zero. Okay. Then I showed that it is not a base. All right. Once again, five, six, seven. What are they? Separability and path connect connectivity and path connectivity, right? Yeah. So separability is easily seen to be now co-hereditary. You see, it was not hereditary, but it's co-hereditary. Why? Take a countable set which is dense, go to the quotient, take the image, that will be also countable set. Claim is that is dense. Very easy because all that you have to do is take an open set in the quotient space. You have to show that it intersects this image, right? Go to the inverse image, that is an open subset in X. So that will intersect the original dense set. That point will be in the intersection of these two in the in the image. That's all. Okay. Six and seven path connectivity, connectivity we have seen. That image, just the image of a continuous function itself is has this property. Connected uh, image will be connected, path connected, image will be path connected. So it's much more stronger than being co-hereditary. So the two columns we have seen, except a few things, like one or two examples like this. We had all these things we had seen. So this is like a, you know, this is like a summary of whatever we have done so far, except this example and this this example. Okay. So so now we come to the the third column here, product. What we have seen is product of finitely many compact sets is compact. Have you seen that? Yes. But Lindelof space, one doesn't know. Finite is still true, but productivity as such, okay, means that it should be arbitrary product also. So here I am saying yes, but we don't have a proof for arbitrary products, not even countable products, finite products we know. Similarly, for Lindelof, we don't know, okay, the countability, first countability Again, finitely many copies it is, even if you take countable it is, okay, but arbitrary product, we don't know, okay. Similarly, second countability, the separability is more mysterious. What we have done is, for path connectivity, we have seen this one. Remember, connective, path connectivity is easy. Uh, connectivity also you have seen, only for finite things we have seen, 
right? So partly many of these things we have seen, but we don't know all the full answers, none of them pro properly, right? So we shall take up this one next time, all right? So let us stop here.